Hi everyone, here's our second part to our Celtic Knot tutorial. We're going to take a look at monograms this time. How to make a Celtic Knot out of a monogram. And just so you know, mono is a prefix that means one. Gram as a suffix means something written or drawn. And so a monogram is a drawing of one letter or the initials of a name. And so we're just going to use one letter for this um, tutorial, but you could do two, you could do three. It just depends on how complex you want to do. So choose as many letters you want to do. I really like script. I like the curvy, curvy letters. But if you like to only print, you can do it with a print letter. But try to make it a little bit more complex than just a V uh, or an I. You need something that, in fact, probably two letters if you're going to print. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to set the opacity down low. You're going to do this with pencil, so I'll be able to erase this part. You're going to make a letter of some kind or two. Remember, if you're printing, do two. Makes it much more interesting. And we're going to do a curve here because I really like curves. And I'm going to come down here. Now, just like we did on the first one, we're going to go in inline. All of the shapes. And once again, you remember you can decide where the shapes begin and end. So I'm breaking this one off into two instead of doing, or actually, I'm going to make it into three. Let me break it there. Let me bring this over here to complete the end line. I'm going to go here. Let's make one little shape here. I really like to have a lot of shapes because that means I have a lot of intersections to add. Now I know that this is looking really sloppy, but remember part of this assignment is learning to control your tools. So as a practice, okay, but for your project, I hope you do a better job uh, than this. So I'm going to pick up my eraser, like I told you, we erase erased that first line. So we don't know how to make those, in, we don't want to hide the illusion, keep our audience in surprise. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. How did they do that? So that's a little secret. We'll only share amongst ourselves, right? Erase that line. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to do those intersections. What do I want over? What do I want under? Excuse me, I've got to think about what I'm doing, so I'm not talking here. It's hard to draw and talk at the same time. You know, these here I'm going to leave open. This one here I'm going to leave open. I want to do something with them that is more Celtic, and that is to bring in the zoomorphic part. That all looks pretty good, but in zoomorphic art, these little tails in Celtic art might become the heads of the creatures. Right? Let's put another creature down here. Put some teeth on this one. Maybe a jawline. Give him a beard like a serpent of some kind. Give him an eye, maybe some more teeth. I mean, you can take this as far as you want. And over here, this would be like the tail of the creature, right? So we're changing the monogram. Well, actually, we're drawing a monogram and adding zoomorphic characters to it. All I gotta do now is figure out how I want things to be shaded in, right? What is going under? We get that illusion going. Of course, in Photoshop, we're going to paint this with gradients or with the burn and dodge tool to make them look even more 3D. Now, what you got to do for your project, remember, is figure out how are you going to combine Arabic, Celtic knots, Arabic calligraphy, Celtic knots, and the shading from graffiti to make your design look 3D. So there is how to do a monogram, Celtic knot, adding those zoomorphic areas to it. So try out your own letters. But remember, the more complex, the more interesting. Bye-bye.